Hey everyone, Eric here. In today's video, I'm going to address the topic, so you've got a brand new Line 6 Helix, what do you do with it now? In just a few moments, I'm going to share with you some time-saving tips ranging from registering and updating your new Helix to creating your first presets the same day you bring it home. My goal here is kind of twofold. Number one, I wanna see you getting up and creating your, uh, with your new Helix, having fun right away. And second of all, I would like to see you subscribe here, become a new subscriber on the channel, I turn on those post notifications and I promise you if you do that right now I will work very hard to keep you as a subscriber just as I did to get you. All right that being said let's get down to it. All right the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to open up the Helix and we're going to do a brief inventory make sure everything's there. I've never heard of any stories where anything was missing inside the box but it's always best to do a quick inventory check so let's open it up and have a look. Okay in no particular order here looks like we have a USB cable Mounted into the top is a USB flash drive, which will contain your user manual in multiple languages, which is cool. And on top of that, there's some uh, probably enough storage space on here to add quite a few presets, taking them to and from, you know, whatever. A um, little pamphlet here, Line 6 Service Plus Agreement. Congratulations on your Line 6 purchase. Okay, very cool. Some cool stuff inside there. Heavy-duty power cable for Helix. All right, so the only thing that's left inside the box at this point now is just Helix itself. So I will uh, get this out of the box. I'll get it on the desk, and we'll go on to the next step. And before we actually get to that next step, I totally forgot about this. On the bottom of the box becomes the big cardboard cheat sheet. This thing will become your best friend. It tells you everything you need to know. It's like without having to look at the manual. It's a quick glance. It will, it will become your best friend. Trust me on that. So that's, that's bottom underneath all the foam, and underneath your Helix itself, you'll find the cardboard cheat sheet front and back and there we go there's a helix itself we're going to unwrap this get it on the desk get out some power cables and on to the next has that new helix smell you'll notice that there's you know uh, protective plastic film on the scribble strips and of course the uh, the large display. All right, we'll remove all that protective stuff, power it up, and on to the next step. All right, our next step here, we're going to visit line6.com. We have it on the screen as you can see. We're going to do a couple different things here. Number one, um, if you're new here, this is a brand new Helix, you don't have any other Line 6 products, we're going to create a new account. Very, very simple to do that. Um, and we're going to register our Helix. This will allow us to have warranty and will allow us for free updates and all that kind of cool stuff when it comes to firmware and things like that as well too. And we're going to download uh, Line 6 Updater. I'll show you how to do that. That's the program that will let you connect any of your Line 6 devices uh, via USB and anytime there's new updates for that. It's a very, very simple and painless, quick and easy upgrade. And we're also going to download a program called HX Edit. And we'll talk about that in a later video uh, down the road. That's We can spend hours on that one alone, but we might as well grab it until we're here as it is. Okay, so we're gonna jump over to the screen here as we are, and I'm gonna click on the little symbol over here at the very top, right, near the top right. It looks like a little uh, human, I guess, okay? And of course, I already have an account created, so I'm just going to sign in. But if you didn't have an account, it's very, very simple. Just click on that Create Account button. So I'm going to sign in. All right, so now I'm logged in. As you can see, I'm now red. And what I want to do is I want to register my gear. I want to register my Helix. On the uh, right-hand side of the box of Helix, you'll have a barcode and some other things. And you also have a serial number. There's a serial number on the bottom of your Helix as well too. So whichever is easier for you to grab, sometimes it's not as easy to flip over your Helix if you have it in a, you know somewhere on your desk or wherever. Uh, maybe you've got the box nearby. Either way, find that serial number, mark it down, and we're going to register the gear. If you happen to have a copy of your sales receipt, that's a great thing as well too. If you don't have it handy at the exact moment, I think you can add it after the fact, uh, but at least have that sales receipt ready to go as well too. All right, so let's click on that right now. We want to go, we want to a registered gear. Now I have ge some gear registered already because I'm a previous 
uh, Helix owner and I have some other products as well too, a Stomp and HX Effects and things like that. So we're going to register the gear. We're going to scroll down and we're going to choose our product. Of course, now we're talking about Helix. So we're going to scroll down. There's lots of fantastic Line 6 products, but we're going to look for Helix. And then we want to, if I can go in alphabetical order, uh, there we go. We have uh, this one in particular is Helix, not LT, not Rack. This is the one that goes on the floor. So it's Helix. All right, we're choosing Helix. Now, you'll notice that the serial numbers start with a 21HDF. So you, you'll have various numbers on your serial number that you've marked down. Uh, take a picture of it. That's the easiest thing I always recommend, all right, which I've done here. And I am going to type in my serial number, and I will probably blank this out just so you can't see that after the fact. Okay, we've entered our serial number. Next, we choose the date we purchase Helix. Down below, you have a field to upload a receipt if you've scanned your receipt or have taken a, even if you take a picture with your phone and save it as a JPEG or something uh, somewhere on your computer, you can upload that. Where did you purchase? There's a lot of your favorite music stores and things like that. And then, of course, there's other you know auction places like eBay and then there's sites like Craigslist, uh, bought it used or other. You specify there, all right? And then when you're all said and done, you click on register gear. Now you're a registered user, uh, you're in the system, and you're ready to go on to the next step. So as you can see, we've completed the registration. Thank you for registering your Helix, we're ready to go. All right, so next we're gonna be downloading a couple things here. We're gonna be downloading the Line 6 Updater. That's the most uh, key component here that's going to allow us to update our Helix. And down the road, if you get other uh, Line 6 products, it'll allow you to update those as well too. We're gonna to download that and we're going to download HX Edit. We're not even gonna go into HX Edit uh, today, but we're at least gonna download it. I'll show you where to grab it. So we can get Line 6 Updater two different ways. I could click on this nice big old microchip over here with a big red arrow or I can do it by going to software above. And I'm going to do it the this way here. I'm gonna show you by clicking on the drop down menu because that's where a lot of people are going to be going to. All right, so we wanna click on all software and we wanna scroll down until we see line six updater. Now this is very smart. It automatically detects that I'm on Mac OS. If you're on Windows, your various uh, different uh, Windows platforms, it will tell you uh, or you can detect what you have or pick from your you know various whatever you have there. All right, so there we go. We have uh, the latest version here, so I'm gonna click on Get Download. All right, so you have to agree to the software license agreement, just like in any of those things, right? Your iTunes and all that crazy stuff. You have to agree to the, you know, to take your time to read it if you want to, but just click on Accept and Download. Grab your file. So as you can see, it's downloaded. Now, I'm gonna skip this process. I'm sure you all know how to install software. If you don't know how to install software, Google it. There's lots of answers out there. Uh, it's quite simple. So we're going to fast forward until now we have the program installed and we're going to launch that program. All right, so we have the Line 6 Updater Utility software open here. We're going to power up the Helix for the very first time. We're going to update it to its latest firmware. It'll tell us what firmware version is installed. All right, so this is going to be one of the first times we've had the Helix turned on. We want to make sure, obviously, you have your power cable on, your USB cable running to your computer directly to the source, not to a hub if at all possible. And we don't have to worry about our inputs and outputs at this point because we're just doing strictly the software upgrades. Let's reach back in the back, turn it on, and we're going to see the unit boot up for the very first time. And there we go. We're seeing uh, firmware version 2.30. All right, so we're going to see the boot up for the very first time here. And it's pretty quick, relatively quick. There we go. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna go over to the updater utility, put in our credentials that we created earlier, or if you're a Line 6 account holder already, well, just type those credentials in. We're gonna click on Sign In. Very simple. It's saying Helix 2.3, so it detects which Helix we have. It's the Helix Floor 2.30. We're gonna double click that. All right, and so it is saying, uh, here we go, 2.71. We're gonna click on update. All right, gives us some warnings and some, you know, those recommendations, all that kind of stuff. Follow these prompts very closely. All right, software license agreement, one of those things again, it's one of those things where you, we pretty much either have to accept it or we can't get it, so just go ahead. All right, updating your Helix, a few instructions, one, two, and three, follow those instructions. We click Next. 
And here we go. This is very important at this point. You do not want to interrupt this update process. Don't shut off your Helix. Don't pull any cables. Don't do anything that could potentially interrupt this update. As you can see at this point, the Helix now has gone into kind of a service mode to do its thing. So in a moment here, we'll be bringing the Helix up to the most current version, which is 2.71, with further updates coming very, very soon. As we can see here, the uh, firmware download and update process has begun, going re relatively quickly. We're on the home stretch right now. We're just about done. That last little bit, and uh, the Helix will reboot itself and install the latest firmware, and we're ready to rock and roll. Pretty simple. You could always walk away, grab a coffee or a soft drink or whatever to get, tuck the kids into bed, whatever you got to do. Do this while it's doing its update. Come back and you're ready to uh, enjoy the latest firmware and updates of Helix. Here we go. It's always nice to see that graph at the very end. So there we go, a firmware version 2.71.0. All right, just about done. Helix is rebuilding all those presets and all that good stuff going with the uh, new amplifiers and effects and bug fixes, all that good stuff. And there we go. We are done, ready to rock and roll. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go through some preset creation. We're gonna do this very fast. I'm gonna show you how quickly you can do this on your first day bringing home your Helix. We've got a brand new preset here. We're gonna start off 01A new preset. We're going to use this little jog dial right here. We're going to press this button. And the first thing we want to choose is we want to choose an amplifier and a cabinet or an amplifier plus a cabinet separately. But we're going to try together to save some argument and some time here. Scroll down to amp and cab. Go over. We want to choose guitar in this case because I'm going to be playing a guitar. And I'm going to go down to one of my new favorite amps if I can actually find it here. It is the Angle Meteor. Let's find it. Where is it here? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, should be in here some there it is right there all right so now by playing a note i can actually hear some things as we speak okay so we have an amplifier and cabinet and the sound is actually coming to life okay what we're going to do now is we're going to go over one more notch again and we're going to add something uh, like think of this just like creating a, a setup with your own real amplifiers in the real world you have an amplifier in some in a cabinet unless it's a combo it's all in one we want to add some pedals maybe in the case of some of my van halen friends uh you know phase 90s and some reverbs and delays and that kind of cool stuff so the very first thing we're going to do here is we're going to actually add um reverb okay to give it some dimension all right so we're going to push on that we're going to scroll down to reverb we go over, we go mono or stereo, and what I'm going to do in this case here, there's a reverb that I like a lot. It's from the Legacy uh, section, and it's a, called a plate reverb, okay? So we go to plate, we got it. It's probably going to be pretty darn uh, intense. Which it is. Pretty wet. Very, very wet. So on the bottom of the screen here, you're going to notice you've got decay and all your different, your different parameters, pre-delay, low cut, high cut, all that kind of stuff, and mix. Two of the things that we're going to focus on here right now is uh, just the decay and mix. So decay is uh, 7.0. We're going to bring that back to about 5. Okay, And you notice I have a little bit of high gain uh, hiss coming through this because it's a high gain amplifier. Let's bring it back to about 5.5 .5, and here's what we have so far. Not too bad. Okay, Now we still have that hiss. What we could do here is we could actually go over here and put in a noise gate if we wanted to. We could go under dynamics, we could go under mono or stereo, and we could go down to a noise gate. But we're going to show you a way that you can actually save some processing power and go back. So this little button here, your home button, click on the house, always takes you to back to where you were. And we're going to move the little jog shuttle control here. We're going to go right back to the very beginning where it shows the guitar signal. And at the bottom here, it shows input gate on or off. So if I put my guitar on right now, you're going to hear that hiss. All right. And if I turn this to on, look at that arm automatically. <laughs> Okay, now I did actually end up selecting putting in a, a noise gate on here. Uh, let's actually clear that one. Let's go action and let's uh, clear that block. So it's gone. All right, next thing we're gonna do, so we're quickly creating a preset. I wanna do this as fast as possible to show you that it can be done this quickly. All right, we're gonna click on delay. We're gonna go over, we're gonna go to stereo. We're gonna go over, we're gonna go to simple delay. So now this is what we have. You're hearing it panning, kind of ping-ponging back and forth, or an echo on the left, an echo on the right. Okay, we're going to dial that delay, the milliseconds, way back, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood where I like it. Maybe we'll say 250 to, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood, so we're going to go way back. All right. Scroll, 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 scroll. All right, we're getting close to the neighborhood where I want to be. I'm going to say about 275-ish in that neighborhood there, just because that's a, kind of a delay I like. 
I might use that for lead, maybe even for some rhythm as well too. And I'm going to bring my mix. Where do we have our mix? 40%. I'm going to bring it back to a comfortable level, somewhere around, we'll say 20, let's say 30. All right, how about that? There we go. Doesn't that sound kind of nice? All right, so another thing we want to do now is let's, uh, uh, this is a, an effect I love to do. We're going to be using the uh, classic Eddie Van Halen style uh, wet, dry, wet kind of pitch to tune chorusy effects. So we're going to hit on this here. We're going to go down here down to pitch synth. We're going to go to stereo. We're going to go over to dual pitch. All right, so now we've got this. It's going to sound crazy because we have some harmonies going on. It will sound like this. Isn't that crazy? We don't want that. Okay, so the things we want to pay attention to here down at the bottom is our intervals and our sense. Because this is a stereo, we've got an interval here, we've got an interval here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll, we're going to turn our intervals on both 1 and 2 right back to 0 for a moment, okay? Well, actually, they're going to stay at 0. So now we have them both at 0. Now we're going to do the sense on both 1 and 2. And whatever you do here on, on 1, you do the exact opposite on the other. Okay, we're going to dial back our sense one, which will technically be left. We're going to bring that back to about minus seven. Getting close. There we are. There we got it. And over on sense two, which would be the opposite side, we're going to bring it up to plus seven. So whatever you choose on one side, you choose the opposite on the other. And you don't want to go too, too high. Anywhere between maybe five to nine, either side is a great is a great scenario. Now let's see what we got for a chord here. Okay, so nice and nice and thick. If we uh, let's go over to the mix and we want to bring the mix back just a little bit, so we're going to use the page over icon. All right, there we go. We're at 50%. I'm going to bring that back to let's say about 40. How about for now, just for argument's sake? Now I'm going to give you an idea what it sounds like without that. So here's what we got first. I can bypass that effect right now just to see what it's going to sound like without it. So let's hit a chord. Okay, we're going to leave that. We're going to leave it right about there. Maybe we'll bring the mix back just a bit more, 35%. Okay, I'm going to add one more effect because we could go crazy on this and go for, for hours. But I, as you can see, take all my talking aside, we've created a really cool preset in just a matter of a few minutes. We're going to go over one more thing. Now, I'm going to add a phaser, the old script phase 90. Get you an Eddie Van Halen kind of sound. But the thing is, you're going to see right with that block as people are going to say, well, why would you put a phaser after an amplifier, almost a simulating like you're going to have it in the effects loop? We don't want to do that, but we're creating in here just for a moment and we're going to move it in just, just a second. All right, so we're going to go down. We want to go to modulation because a phaser is a modulation style effect. We're going to go mono because we're going to stick it in front of the amplifier and we're going to scroll down to script mod phase. And there we go. Technically, we have this. Okay, we've got that sound. All right, so I want to click on action and I want to move it. Later on, I'll show you in, an, in another video where we can do this all with software. We just click and drag and drop. But it goes to show you how easy, if you didn't have a computer with you, how you can do this right on your Helix in very, very short time. I'm going to click on action and I'm just going to move it across like that. I'm going to stick it right in front of the amplifier and I'm going to hit action again. Now my phaser is in that spot. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, now, this is the last thing I'm going to show you. So we've created a preset with one, two, three, four, five blocks, including a phaser, an amplifier with a cabinet, reverb, delay, and pitch. Uh, I think one of the last things I'm going to do just for my own kind of OCD, which I, I'm not really OCD, but I'm going to just move this anyways. I'm going to go over to my pitch, and I'm going to move it up in front of the delay. I'm going to hit action, boom, boom, and maybe in front of the reverb, hit action, and now we got it there. So that pitch is coming now before the reverb and the delay. All right. So before I actually save this preset, what I want to do now is I want to be able to access and put each of these little things, well, especially the phaser, and uh, we're not going to worry about the amplifier, but the pitch change, which is the pitch to tune, reverb and delay, we're going to assign them to some buttons, okay? So we're going to go over here, okay, whoops, so stay, on, stay where we were, all right? So I'm going to press and hold, not even press and hold, I'm just going to touch the first button right here, okay? And it's going to say, do I want to put it there? Yes. So now I have the phaser. I'm going to go over to the pitch detune, okay? I'm going to press this, this touch here, all right? I'm going to say, yes, I want to assign it there. I'm going to go over to the reverb. I'm going to touch here, okay? We've got it set. Lastly, I'm going to go over to the delay, and I'm going to touch here, just, just pressing, just touching the feather touch, and we've got it. So now I can turn off any of these effects, as you can see on the screen. They're going off 
I've just assigned them. I can swap them around. If I wanted to do something like this, I could do, I could, re, I could swap these two. Okay, it's gonna ask me if I want. So now I've just put, I've just changed the location. I'm not changing where they are in the chain of effect. I'm just which where I want them on my pedal board. It's like putting your pedals in a certain order. But we have now created a preset in less than five minutes. It may, and if we're longer than five minutes, it's only because I was talking long. It certainly only t would only take away all the conversation and we will be done within probably a minute and a half of creating this preset. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go save. We can call it whatever we want. Or, you know, you know, we can go through the dial, the presets here, and we'll just say, Eric, all right, like this, very, very easy. So, so easy if you can turn the knobs properly. Here we go. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna delete some of the other stuff, all right? And I'm gonna just make this a number one. We call it whatever we want. The sky's the limit except for, you know, there's a certain amount of character. Okay, I'm gonna go to the very end here. And now I'm just going to go uh, delete, over, delete, over, delete over, delete, over, delete, and I hit save. Now we have Eric 1 and we have our first preset. <laughs> That's it. How simple was that? So that about wraps things up. If we're looking for takeaways from our video here today, I think the biggest thing we can uh, reflect on is the fact that it's very, very easy to create presets the same day you bring your Helix home. So I really hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It lets me know you appreciate this content. And if you haven't yet subscribed, there's no better time like the present, hit that subscribe button right now and turn on post notifications so you are notified when I upload more content like this or when I go live. As I said earlier at the start of the video, I promise to work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you as one. Thank you so much. Go have fun with your new Helix, and until next time, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>